It's a privilege for me to, to be here today with you. Baie dankie dat jylle gekom het, dames en heren. Um, die idee wat ek vandag vir met jylle wil, wil deel is, wat jylle inlichting kan gee, so that you can use the information and hopefully with that also make wise but also informed decisions. On the screen you will find the slogan that it says, um, spend, you know, enjoy life but spend quality time with your books. Um, for me is the sleutel to success. It is one of the sleutels that you can use and toepas in your life that can make up your end of the day that you success all can get. If you apply this, it will open up a lot of doors for you. Obviously, great 11, at this point of time in your life, your priority is also obviously to make sure that you pass your grade 11 with the highest possible marks possible that you can actually use it marks later to um, apply to universities and, 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 and go into the field of your choice that you would like to engage in. But still, there's a lot of things in life that gives you, a lot of fun things, things you can enjoy to the, in, in every possible way. And in that, there's, a, there's also a, a secret to, have a, to having a balanced lifestyle. But for now, as a grade 11, with just a few weeks left for this year, make sure you can put in everything, every single hour you can, to get the highest possible marks you can actually get by the end of the year. What you'll find is, if it comes to getting into the universities, uh, you'll find we actually have, have this problem that we, we get way too many applications we have got capacity for. Uh, we're making use of final marks when it comes to applying and registering. So you want to see what your, what your performance was after fin finishing a, a complete curriculum at school. So therefore, we're not going to be taking in any mid-year results when you're getting grade 12, if you want to apply in grade 12. We're only going to be making, making use of your final promotion marks of grade 11. And that is why grade 11 is such an important year. Um, many people actually underestimate the importance of grade 11. But with your final promotion mark of grade 11, that is the marks you're going to be using uh, if you want to apply in grade 12 to get into the programs of your choice, or at least to get considered for selection for certain programs as well. As you can see at the bottom there, they indicate that we receive more than 43,000 applications a year. And we currently, un unfortunately for first years, we only have space for 10,500 first year students. Okay, we're just going to go to the next slide there. Now, I know it's difficult for grade 11 um, to sit here and, you know, to think what I would like to do with my life. What is the specific type of job I would like to do after I've, you know, finished school and, you know, take up my career? Um, to be honest with you, I wasn't also exactly sure what I wanted to do with as a career or a specific job when I was in grade 11. It's difficult and sometimes actually unfair. But the reality is you have to make a decision sometime or later. Now I've got some pointers on the screen there that will hopefully help you to guide you making a bit of a better and wise decision if it comes to making decisions regarding career. Now I'm referring to a career field rather than a specific job. Because I think the major thing is rather choose a specific field at this point of time. I'm not talking about the field, I'm talking about the field of business or a field of law or a field of, say for example, engineering. And not at this point of time already making this final, final decision, I would like to become, for example, a chartered accountant. But you have got an interest in the field of business at least at this point of time. But in any case, you'll find that there's a five things, actually six things I would like to point out that will hopefully guide you making a, a more realistic choice if it comes to um, your career choices you would like to follow. The very first one is interest. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, one of the biggest reasons why a lot of our first year students decide not to continue their studies is because of that first thing you can see on the, on the screen there, is the interest. They realize they're studying something that they actually haven't got interest in. Or they can't see themselves going into the uh, workplace environment where they have to apply the stuff they're actually studying at this stage. So make sure when you actually pursue a course or a field that you would like to go and study that you have a good interest in that. That stuff that interests you, that grabs your attention, we actually read something in the newspapers or if you listen to something on the radio or whatever, you have got a massive interest if it comes to searching the, uh, surfing the web. That is the type of things that, that grabs your attention, that you like reading about. Another thing is, you know, if it comes to going into the workplace environment later on, you need to be excited to go to work at every day. You want to jump out, of, jump out of bed and you would actually want to go to work as soon as possible because you love doing the stuff you're doing at work. That is the type of thing I'm talking about if you have got an interest in what you're doing. 
aptitude. Aptitude is something obviously that you've got a skill, ability, a natural acclinance to that you can that come easily for uh, for you if it comes to navigating through life. You might realize there's something that you have that some other people actually have it difficult to uh, to do or um, actually find difficult to to put on a table or to create or you know apply in whatever they do, but you find it easy. That your talents, your abilities, your intellectual ability, but also physical ability. That's the type of thing that I'm actually pointing out as, a, as your aptitude. That's also an indicator that helps you to make an indecision regarding the career field you'd like to go into. Personality. Each and, every one of sitting us, each and every one of us sitting here today has got a different personality. We all are individuals and we all have our own personality in the way we actually deal with, um, for example, conflict situations, applying ourselves to tasks, um, and also working with people. Now the interesting thing is, if you can align your interest, your aptitude, and your personality with each other, it's a good indicator, good uh, actually thing to look at in terms of career field. Because it means that you can enjoy what you do at the end of the day as well. The fourth thing is work ethics. Now unfortunately that's something that doesn't always come naturally to us. It's something you have, it's a, it's a type of skill you need to develop. And you can already start doing that while you're at school in grade 11. Because if you try to do that when you get at university, it's actually almost too late. With the work, what, I talk, what I mean by that is, is the simple thing about, you know you have to do, and you need to go and submit an assignment, and therefore you need to submit it on time. When it comes to doing your homework, do your homework every day. Um, you know, that small little things that you apply with integrity, that you know what you're putting in is what you're gonna get out at the end of the day. Personal vision. That is something that nobody can actually tell you, but you have to, you have to um, actually go and find it out for yourself. Explore it, but also discover it by yourself. And that's a, that thing that's deep down in your heart. That I also usually call it that God-given purpose in life. That thing that draws you, and that also shows you that it aligns with your interest, your aptitude, and also your personality. That's just five things that I can point out there that you can have a look at. Making, helping and making a decision regarding interest in career fields. But one thing that I also would like to stress a lot is a, the thing that you've got in the, on the right hand side of the, of, the of, the, of the screen there. And that is job setting. Parents, and I, would like to, I would like to challenge you actually to create an opportunity for your child to, get, to actually see what's going, out, what's going on out there in the workplace environment. They can, that they can actually experience firsthand what are the nice things and what are the not so nice things about the workplace environment that they think they've got an interest in. By doing that, obviously you get exposed, you get experience, but you also understand how the workplace environment works. And when it comes back to the theory, you'll be able to understand the theory better as well. Another thing is, Timbella also have been spoken about the, the selection programs. I'm also going to refer about to that in a later stage. But all our selection programs require from you that you have to go and spend a certain amount of hours in the industry and put it on your value-added form later on. Okay, so for our selection courses, we actually put it as a compulsory aspect that you need to get exposure to the industry. And I would like to challenge you also to do it already this year. Because next year, grade 12, is going to be a very busy year. There's not going to be a lot of time and opportunity for you to actually go out and get some hours. So really start doing that this year if you can. For some it will be easy, for some it will be going to be difficult. <laughs> You'll find that with the universities, we work with two sets of admission requirements. The very first set is that you need to make sure that you get admission for degree studies. The second set is where each and every university will differ from one each other, where we're gonna say that we need to, we're gonna look at certain subjects, we're gonna look at certain marks for those specific subjects, and you need to have a specific APS score. So let's quickly look at the first admission requirement then. Okay, in order to understand the first admission requirement, we need to look at the, the framework of the National Senior Certificate, and obviously also the people doing the IEB course as well. The National Senior Certificate consists of basically seven subjects. So you all know that seven subjects you need to have, minimum of seven subjects, um, of which six of those will be the 20 credit bearing subjects. And one will be a 10 credit bearing subject. And that obviously is your life orientation. I'm going to refer to that aspect in a few minutes, or a few seconds actually. Now, four, four of the, those seven subjects is compulsory. Your two languages, Mathematics or mathematic literacy, and then life orientation. So that's subjects you all have sitting here today, that's in grade 11. Then three other subjects are choice subjects. 
Now, in order to get admission for degree studies, making sure you, make many, you uh, meet the first admission requirement, you'll find what they indicate is you need to have at least four what they call designated subjects, or some people also call it admission subjects, and you need to have those four subjects on the level four, 50% or more. Now, the good news is three of those um, designated subjects is already compulsory subjects. You find that you'll be a two languages together with your mathematics or mathematic literacy. So you've got three of the four ad, um, admission subjects you need to have in order to, in order to get admission for degree studies that you need to have 50% or more for. So in other words, you actually still need to choose at least one other subject. Now you all have chosen subjects last year or actually the year before in grade nine, but all of you need to have at least four designated subjects that's on this list that you can see here. And you need to make sure you get 50% or more for those four subjects and you get admission for degree studies. Now, in the second set of admission requirements, like the second aspect we talked about, where all the universities are different from one another, I've indicated that you need to have the certain subjects, you need to have certain marks for certain subjects, and we also look at your APS score. Now, some people will confuse the calculation of the APS score with admission subjects. Admission subjects is the only ones that's on the list there. But you'll find there will be other subjects that you maybe have in your portfolio of subjects, like, for example, CAT or tourism, hospitality studies, that's not on that list there. But those subjects still count towards your APS score. All right. And the nice thing about that, that is subjects actually that's also nice to have, that's easy usually, and what you, what you can actually do, you can actually push your APS score up as well by having those subjects. But in terms of getting admission for degree studies, the first admission requirement set, you require that you need to have at least four subjects on level four, 50% or more for that then you actually at the bottom of your, your certificate will indicate that you've got admission for degree studies. So that's the first thing we're looking at. Now, getting back to the second admission requirements where I've indicated you need to have certain subjects for, and certain marks for those specific subjects and a certain APS score. Calculating the APS score is quite simple. What you do is you look at each and every subject you have and you make sure you've got, um, you need to add all your different um, achievement levels together, except for life orientation. Remember, I've mentioned earlier on, life orientation is a 10 credit bearing subject. So therefore, we can't add it into the equation. So you're looking at all your, ad all your subjects, including CAT, including tourism, if you've got that, including uh, um, uh, hospitality studies, if you've got that. But you're looking at your top six subjects. So if you're sitting here today, and you've got, for example, eight subjects or nine subjects, we look at your top six subjects, obviously excluding life orientation. So that's how you're going to add up all your, all your achievement levels for each and every subject, and the total you get is going to be your admission point score, your APS score. Now, just to give an example, what we're looking at, and like I said, all the universities is uh, different from one or the, one or the other, but at, at the University of Pretoria, um, and all the other universities are also going to look at, do you've got the right subjects, and do you've got the right marks for the subjects, and the APS score. So with our, with our brochures we have, you're going to look at the, for example, the very first block, there is a number five. Now that indicates the achievement level. So this is an example for audiology, where we're going to where we require from you that you need to have English and mathematics. So if you've got mathematic literacy, unfortunately we're not going to be able to take your application in because you haven't got the right subjects. We require that you need to have the right subjects still. So what they require then is for English, for Afrikaans, you need to have a level five. That is 60% or more. And then for mathematics, you can see that the very first block underneath mathematics is level four. That's 50% or more. And then right at the back, you find there's an APS score of 32. So like I've indicated, we're looking at the specific subjects, the marks for those specific subjects, and the APS score. Decision between mathematics and mathematic literacy. There is a whole bunch of subjects you can do if you've got mathematic literacy. You find, for example, at the bottom, they indicate the um, courses within the, in the faculty of humanities. It includes psychology or criminology, sociology, social work, the arts. There's a, a lot of other courses within humanities you can do with, with mathematic literacy. There's also theology that you can look at, law, you can study LLB, and also the BA law if you've got mathematic literacy. And obviously also within the, uh, within the School of Information Technology, we've got two courses that you can also do if you've got mathematics literacy. But the reality, uh, uh, people, is that the fact that uh, all of your scientific related courses, your BSc degrees, your engineering degrees, um, even our business courses also, most of them, requires that you have to have pure maths. So if it is that you have an interest in the course, 
where mathematics is not required and you realize that you're going to fail mathematics, yes, then I would suggest move down to mathematic literacy or move a lot over to mathematic literacy. But if you've got an interest in the course where mathematics is a required subject, hang on to that mathematics. Go for extra classes, study more hard and putting more hours in that, making sure you understand the work that you're dealing with in mathematics to put your marks on the right level then. Difference between selection courses and open courses. You will find that um, some courses, there are limited space available, and therefore we put it as selection courses. Where others, there are much more space available, that, um, and therefore we can accommodate much more students than with the selection courses. Now, in order to explain, I'm first going to explain what is how we work about um, you know, uh, uh, taking in application and giving provisional admit admittance for open courses. Open course, we say, right, we look at your application, we look at your promotion mark of grade 11, if you've got the right, right subjects, the right marks for the subjects, and the right APS score, we take the application in if we still have space, in other words, before we have filled up, and we, reserve a, we've given you provi we give you provisional admittance to the course, in other words, we're reserving a space for you. And we wait for your final grade 12 results then to register you. The selection courses work a bit different though. You can see that the, the closing date for admissions is way earlier than, than what the open courses are. And what they do is then we'll take all the applications up until that date, and then we'll start with the selection process, where they're going to look, obviously, first of all, at your promotion marks. The, the biggest amount of, or the biggest portion of the selection is based on your grade 11 results. But they also really look at your national benchmark test results. I'm going to refer to that in a second. They also look at your value added form, and I've re referred to that earlier on where I've indicated you have to go and work a certain amount of hours in the field if it comes to the value added form. Now, if it comes to portfolios like architectural studies and your, and your arts, they also require that you need to submit a portfolio. Fine arts, they also require that you need to come for audition. Um, some faculties or departments also require that you need to come for interviews. So there's other things I also look at over and above just your marks if it comes to the selection then. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide because um, actually I would like to encourage you to make sure that you get your marks on the, on the highest level possible, that you don't have to qualify for the extended program. But if it, it gets to a point that you realize your marks are not on the required level as required for the normal programs, you can also look at the extended programs. We have, we have lowered the admission requirements a bit because of the fact we have lowered the workload in, this, in your first year. In other words, you've got lesser subjects in your first year and some of your first year level subjects will actually flow over to the second year. As a result, you extend your years of study with an extra year, basically. So for engineering, for example, instead of doing it in four years, you're doing it in five years. The same with, the, um, for example, the courses in the natural and agricultural sciences, economic and management sciences, um, together with um, your, your human humanities as well. So there's a variety of open courses um, have got extended programs available. But, um, if you can, see if you make sure that you can get in your marks on the, on the right level to actually get into the normal programs at least. The national benchmark test is a test that we actually require students to write for our selection courses mainly, but also we encourage you strongly to go and write it in any case, regardless whether you're doing a selection course or not. For the selection course, like I've indicated, we're looking at that marks as part of the admission requirement, uh, as part of the final selection into the course. As a matter of fact, for, for some of the courses, it's to even play 60% of the final selection then. But with the open courses, it is made more like a, a, a safety net. So even if you've managed to get your grade 11 results on the right level, where you then manage to get provisional admittance, when it comes to your final grade 12 results and you haven't met the minimum requirements, then as a matter of fact, we're going to say, sorry, we cannot register you because you didn't meet the minimum requirements anymore. If you have written a national benchmark test, however, we can refer back to that and we can see if we can pull you still into the course there. So for the open course, we strongly encourage you still to go and write the national benchmark test next year. And the best time for the open course to go and write the tests will be between your prelims and your final exams. But for the selection courses, because of the fact that they require that you need to write the NBT test and they use the marks for that, you need to write your national benchmark test usually on the very first Saturday of your winter holidays next year. There's two papers that you write. If you, um, if you are planning on a, applying for a course where mathematics is required, you need to write the mathematics test paper there. The MAT, as you can see, it, the, the second one. However, if uh, in regardless whether the fact that you would like to uh, do a course where mathematics is a requirement or not, you're going to have to write the, a, the AQL, the Academic and Quantitative Literacy paper. That's more like a, a comprehension test that you actually do. 
as you can see, there's a lot of information regarding the requirements. I would strongly would like to encourage you, if you've got more questions about admission requirements for the specific courses you've got an interest in, please do make um, effort, you know, sending us emails or contact us that we can give the right information instead of you hearing it from other people and then get the, in, the wrong information at the end of the day. Um, you'll find information or contact details on our website, so please go about, have a look at our website on our Junior Tiki app. There's also obviously an op option for you to send inquiries through the app as well through us. But I would like to encourage you, please make effort to ask questions on things you're not too sure about. Instead of later in the beginning of next year, have received the wrong information and then obviously not be able to apply with us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much. And I wish you all the very best of, the, of luck for the rest of the year with your exams. Thank you.